Hey there, it's the Three Stooges of Transcend Coffee. Here to talk to you again about the next installment of our 50 pound project. What are we drinking today, Josh? Today, we are drinking our first naturally processed coffee of the 50 pound series. Uh, it's a naturally processed Keturah from, once again, the same mill, the Shumava de Lourdes mill. But actually, this was grown right on that farm on the Monte Lourdes plot. So, uh, Francisco Mena is both the miller and the farmer. Cool, what does natural mean? So, um, when we talk about processing, we're always talking about how you get from coffee the fruit to the seed inside of it. Uh, a natural process just means that the cherries are picked, sorted, and then dried on raised beds, whole cherry, until the whole thing is dry. That's a pretty risky form of processing because if it rains, or if it's not uh, warm enough, or if it's too humid, the, actually, the, the coffee cherry won't dry properly, and you'll get like lots of moldy flavors. Uh, but fortunately, this part of Costa Rica is uh, has a really great dry dry season, as well as lots of high winds, high which winds. can be damaging for other reasons, but are actually great for natural coffee production. Yeah, we were there in February of last year, so about a year ago, and uh, it was ridiculously windy. It was a crazy, crazy windy day, and we were we were present to see the the, the effects of the ravaging wind because the whole plot of Francisco's uh, SL28 were completely bare because the wind had stripped all the, the trees of their leaves. So it can be a pretty serious thing there. Um, maybe you, you, you talked about natural processing coffee and the how it works. Maybe let's talk a little bit about where where that, that method of processing came from because it's not traditional in terms of sort of the European process, right? It's I mean, it's traditional in the sense that it's been done like that in Ethiopia for a right. long time where coffee's Africa. from. Um, but it's... Until uh, like specialty coffee started to take off, uh, maybe about 20 years ago, it wasn't really like super common to see. Uh, but it's, a, I mean, the flavor profiles that you get from naturally processed coffee is that they're actually really heavily influenced by the fact that the cherry is drying right on on the seed. Uh, you get really intense fruity flavors. Yeah. You get less variety characteristic. I'm, I'll be honest, unless terroir ter characteristic, but the quality of the fruit is much more like deep berry, like think blueberry, blackberry, uh, occasionally a bit like tropical fruit flavors as well. This particular one I think is super blueberry, blackberry, my, myself, a great example of, of uh, what a naturally processed coffee uh, can taste like. Yeah, and I think for me, having been in this industry for now quite a while, natural coffees for me, I've always been sort of, I'm not a huge fan of naturals because I, I'll, especially early on, natural coffee these, a lot of the examples of natural coffees were what I would describe as over fermented and they they ended up coming across with sort of almost rotten watermelon or rotten strawberry flavors um, which were wildly unique in the especially in the early days of naturals and within the specialty coffee area but just examples of bad processing and uh, but they were so different that people were like oh these are amazing and yeah. this that's this is not one of those obviously but uh, but, but I like Josh said there's a there's a there is a much need to be careful in this process because it's a it's pretty hard to regulate the quality when you start playing with natural stuff. it really can be uh, because you're I mean all, oftentimes at the mercy of the elements and to be uh, to be kind of frank uh, it's a flavor profile that's really desirable so lots of uh, roasters uh, and 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 importers who work with millers and exporters are actually like really pushing hard for these things even in places where maybe it's not appropriate yeah maybe where it's like it's uh, it's taking on too much risk for a farmer yeah, so in an environment where it's very, very humid, it's a really risky uh, process to, like I remember doing, uh, going to Honduras one time and it was, and they had this, this little farmer had a, a little greenhouse and it was already hot and humid outside and then you walked into the greenhouse and it was 100% humidity and 40 degrees and I'm like, you guys should not be doing natural here. <laughs> like it's just yeah, it's, not a good, good condition for it. Uh, you, you, you have to design your systems for it. Yeah. Uh, 
and I mean, we're still learning more about how, how it works, and I think this is a really exciting time in specialty coffee, because all kinds of new interesting processes and ways of, of, of controlling ex existing processes are coming out. And again, like that's what this project is all about. It's all about finding really great examples of really high quality production and unique processes. In this case, this is just like a, a, a natural process coffee isn't super common out of Costa Rica yet. Um, it's, it's getting more common, but this is just like executed very, 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 very well in like in an area that has really, really, really excellent weather for it. So Jordan, mm -hmm. remind the viewers of how you brewed. Sweet, yeah. Um, this was, I, I call this our classic V60 recipe. Uh, 60 grams per liter. So I did 25 grams of coffee, 400 milliliters of water. It took about three minutes and 45 seconds to brew that, which is kind of around where we usually tend to find our coffees taste really great. Um, it's a paper filter, so hopefully it highlights some nice acidity, which I usually find a little lower in a natural process coffee. So it would be really great if we get some of that in this. So. Nice. Cool. Hot diggity. Um, really fruity. Very fruity. Mm -hmm. Like, but I mean, the the acids in balance, right? For sure. This isn't like a this isn't like a crazy acid of coffee or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's delicious. It's got a little bit of like a cinnamony yeah. overtone. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It's delicious. We hope you enjoy it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can watch us do it. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> No, it's a, it is a great example of a natural, what a natural can be, right? where there, where you get, I, I think one of the inter interesting things for me with naturals is that uh, essentially, for those of you that haven't had a lot of exposure to them, it's just this complete departure in terms of coffee uh, from what you're used to. And uh, our coffees tend to be a departure regardless, but if you haven't yet had a natural, then you're going to be surprised by this, only in that it's just such a, it's such a departure in terms of fruit characteristic. Um, mm -hmm. And what a you know a great representative of what yeah. how fruity coffee can be, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's often fruit is a subtle characteristic of coffees. It's not subtle here. Mm -hmm. Not no no absolutely not. And uh, it's just it's interesting that you know it's, it's it's a new phenomenon, but it's been done for centuries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like and realistically, like yeah. washing coffee really started in maybe the 1700s, 1800s, uh, and. You know, it was dried on the seed, like whole seed, uh, for for yeah. for a long time mm -hmm. in, in, in in Yemen and in, in, in Ethiopia as and, part of. And what's interesting about they consume coffee. I think what's interesting about naturally dried coffee is that the innovation is actually raised beds, right? Because it used to just be thrown on the ground mm -hmm. and and left on the ground to dry. Uh, they didn't have beds, and and that obviously that process, which is still used in a lot of places, like you know, still in various places of, you know, in Indonesia, where they dry coffee on the ground. Oh, they do it everywhere. Everywhere. It's just that mm -hmm. makes the, the quality even less consistent because now you have the influence of, of mold and, and contact with the ground, which is and, and animals and things like that really too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. What's yeah. great is the this is what specialty coffee is all about, mm -hmm. and it's all about uh, also re recognizing the work that's being done on the production side, at, on the agricultural side, uh, so that uh, we can like actually like appreciate more more about coffee, more like it's like it's you know like wine or like tea or or, or, mm -hmm. or or something like that. Cool. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button. I don't even know if we have one, but thanks. We probably oh. have a like button. So. Yeah, you should like it. Yeah. Hey, next time we got a geisha coming for you. Uh, it's a producer that we've worked with for, this is going to be our third year. Uh, Don Jose or uh, Don Pepe and his wife, Don Donya Daisy, have a farm and a little tiny micro mill uh, in the Central Valley of Costa Rica. The most beautiful house as well. It's it's, it's just a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, it's a red honey geisha. Uh, the last geisha that we had was our first coffee from Pente Tarasu, uh, and it was a wash, like like white honey washed ish geisha, or I guess it was a yellow honey, but that's, we'll talk more about why those terms can be a little bit confusing uh, in the next video, uh, and uh, this one will be like a red honey, so you're going to get the combinations of the red honey process and the geisha variety. Awesome. Well, until next time, drink less more often. Well, we're back to that. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs>